Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Real excited to have our next guest on. He's a guy I, I worked for recently. I did stand-up on his, uh, on his uh, network, Access TV, uh, Gotham Comedy Live. I hosted that, and it was, it was a lot of fun to do live TV like that. It's a fun network. It's interesting what he's doing over there. Real outspoken about A-Rod and uh, Major League Baseball, owns the Dallas Mavericks, and he's a guy I've been a fan of for a long time. Please welcome to the show, Mark Cuban. Mark, thanks for coming on, man. My pleasure, Artie. Sorry it took me so long, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. You know, first of all, I, I want to talk real quick about uh, the stuff you mentioned, uh, Jay Leno and A-Rod and sure. everything. And listen, I'm, there, I'm not an A-Rod guy. I'm a Yankee fan who feels, you know, I don't know, uh, disappointed him in a lot of ways. But you made a great point. The 211 games, that's that, that's personal. I mean, who knows what's going to come out. But um, and, and Selig is... is, is 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 an interesting character. I mean... Character's uh, the right word, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you're a guy who, in good faith, you've proven to be a, an amazing owner in the NBA. You do nothing but great things for the league. Uh, you, you put a championship team out on the floor. Um, uh, very little controversy, you know, and uh, why not do that in baseball with a team like Rangers, Cubs, and, and you say flat out there's some sort of... Uh, you know, oh, yeah, you call it the base, baseball yeah, they told, mafia. They told me don't even think about it. And, you know, I went around and talked to a bunch of owners, and the owners I talked to, and this is um, during the whole Cubs thing, um, they were all really supportive. Right. Um, except for one. <laughs> and one guy out of Chicago, you know, basically told me it's not going to happen. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, Danny Filato, our producer, is a Chicago guy, and he was saying everyone in Chicago wanted you to buy that team. Oh, it was, it was crazy. I yeah. Mean, you know, in some respects, I'm glad I didn't because I would weigh like 600 pounds. <laughs> they, they would find me frozen to a seat in right field with seven hot dogs glued to my head. <laughs> that's, that's an eating town. I was there recently doing stand-up uh, as well, and that, that's a good place to eat. But, I mean, how does, how does Shelly get away with something like that? Well, I mean, it's you know, baseball. It's, it's his baby. It's his mafia. Right? right. I mean, you know, it's different than the NBA. I give, you know, David and I, um, David Stern of the NBA and I have had our battles. But right. I've always completely respected him, and, and I think he's... He, it took some time, but I think he grew to realize that, you know, I was just trying to do things that I thought would improve the league, and a lot of things that I've tried to, to do to help the league have come true and really have helped. Definitely. Um, and, and so I think he came to respect that, but, you know, according to the owner from Chicago, that, you know, I asked him why. Like, you know, you're outspoken. You know, you're reverent. You're not always going to take orders from authority. Oh, my God. Like, that hasn't worked out in the past to be the greatest thing for from Bill Veck the, to Charlie Finley to oh, Steinbrenner. Yeah. I mean, come on. Except, you know, it also creates an issue where you might not have the power. You know, it might uproot your power. Right. And I right. think that scared him. So, you know, and then I know when he heard about the Leno comments, you know, somebody in there told me that he was really pissed that it got so much pickup and publicity everywhere and, and didn't just die. So that made me feel good. Good. Well, it's, you know, it's something that shouldn't. If something like that is happening with America's pastime, if you want to call it that, it's wrong, you know. And uh, now, A-Rod, are you a personal friend to A-Rod? I a mean, bit of that? a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we're not best friends, but, you know, and actually he did reach out and say thanks, but... Um, after the comments, but nothing more. It's not like we hang out all the time. Do you, uh, do, what do you feel is going to happen, just your opinion on uh, with A-Rod? What do you think is going to be the end I, I game? I don't there? know, to yeah. be honest with you, because I don't know all the league's bylaws and rules. But whatever, you know, typically what, because of the unions, you know, you have to go back to the rules. And right. sometimes the leagues will kind of overstretch their boundaries, knowing that they'll have to dial it back because of union rules and, you know, arbitration and all that stuff. But I, I don't know all the particulars of, of Major League Baseball. But I will say this, you know, to kind of stir things up some more. One of the things that we never got to in that show um, that I wanted to was that, you know, we, start, we were going to talk some about HGH, and the reality is, no one's ever shown that HDH is a uh, is a P -A -P -E -D, a performance enhancing drug. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and I've tried to read up and follow all the studies, and you know, of all the studies there's ever been, there's like one little study that said it helps some guys run faster, um, but nothing else. Man, that's that's fascinating. You know, because you just you, you know, as a fan of the game, you know, I just. You just accept whatever the media throws down your throat. It's right. unbelievable. Right. I mean, my, my co-host, John Ritchie, played in the league for seven years. I mean, yeah. what do you think about that, John? But HGH, I know nothing about it. Right. I, and I don't know if guys were delving into that back when I was playing in the NFL or not. But but some of the things that I've read, Mark, that, that you've said about HGH, it really made me think. Um, I mean, is this is this a substance that really could promote health 
exactly. in just anyone, not exactly. just athletes? It's just gotten such a bad rap that what happens is when a, when a drug gets a bad rap, none of the pharmaceutical companies want to do studies on it because they don't want to be seen as doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Right. You know, they, I don't want to be, they don't want to be seen as, as supporting performance-enhancing drugs in sports. They don't, you know, they're particularly afraid that if anything came out that showed it in a positive light for athletic performance, that high school kids would jump all right. over. And, you know, what, what's, you know, and there are a lot of uncertainties about HGH. I don't want to sit here and say, look, there's no proof that it's a performance-enhancing drug, which is true for the most, except for the one example I gave you. But there isn't, but because there aren't any long-term studies, there's no proof that there aren't ne really negative side effects either. Yeah, right. that, that's so the one there's, problem. There's, there's unknown risk, and to me, that's part of the problem, one of the reasons I wanted to speak out, because I want to see people doing studies. I've actually reached out um, through somebody to um, some universities and said, look, I don't want to do studies that determine whether or not um, a football player can run faster or a basketball player can jump higher or recover faster. I want to see, you know, if there's guys our age, what does it do to help guys our age right. in terms of recovery and quality of life? Because if there's something there that's good, hell, as we get older, you know how much more it hurts. <laughs> no, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Well, is, that, I, is it a key, uh, key component to the anti-aging clinics? I mean, is HGH kind of the stuff that they're basing their... Yeah, because it's... it's it helps you um, metabolize faster, so it will help you lose weight. Yeah. Least in some cases, in some of the studies, it'll show that it will help you lose weight. It will help you get bigger, um, if, depending on how hard you work out, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Um, but again, that that's just anecdotal, and so, you know, I, I haven't delved into it with an, an anti-aging clinic, so I haven't even looked at that side of it. Mm -hmm. But but really, you know, my interest was I wanted to find out what was fact and what was fiction. And the reality is there's not enough fact about HGH to come to any conclusions, positive or minus. Mm. And, you know, to me, that indicated that probably all this just had a stigma attached to it and no one had really done all the homework. But then what I did find out is that with testosterone, if it's administered by a doctor and, and done, you know, clinically, um, it's absolutely safe. Right. Well, interesting. Mm. You know, it's and, funny. It's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, but go ahead. You know, and so what I was going to say is, I, you know, there's a part, I've said it in, in NBA meetings that, look, you know, if, if a player takes it by himself without being administered by a doctor, yeah. that's wrong. Right. Um, because you're putting your health at risk. But if it's something that's proven to be safe and could potentially be used by everybody, mm -hmm. how is that any different than any other type of um, prescribed drug? Yeah, you got you to gotta yeah. do that with, like, as far as the younger people, kids, teenagers using it. You got to say, yeah, look, you yeah, got a doctor. You don't want that at all. Right. Yeah, the key is having it administered by doctors. Right, exactly. You got to be a doctor. You don't want it abused. Any drug abused is a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and part of it, if you glorify all the, you know, all the things we've seen in baseball, because they get glorified, then kids do it. Um, but if all of it was administered by a doctor, so, you know, players couldn't overdo it, players couldn't hurt themselves with it, you know, you know, there's, I, I grew up in Pittsburgh, and I can tell you, you know, I knew Steve Corson who right. abused it, and and what a mess, you know, and he died, mm -hmm. and and so you don't want to see that, obviously. But, you know, the other side of the coin is in all professional sports, if you do have a shortage of testosterone and you test for it and it's clinically proven, the doctors are allowed to administer you testosterone. Wow! So there huh. literally are guys in the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball is, is what I've been told that are legally taking testosterone. Now, whether or not it, you know, dramatically increases their performance, I don't know. But, you know, just like the commercials say, if you have low T, then it can be administered, and it, it is being administered in the league, and nobody really talks about that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, getting back to the other thing, you don't seem like a guy who, who gives up too easily, but what about baseball? Have you given up for a while in getting yeah, a team? Yeah, that's why I came out and said the stuff on C-League, because I knew that kind of sealed my fate. It's done now. With the, after that, well, as long as he's there. But, yeah, as long you know, as he's there, yeah. yeah. What, about, what about an NFL team, Mark? I can't is that... an NFL team. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, saying a lot, that really. That is saying a lot, <laughs> right. I mean, you know. Um, what about the Raiders? You know, it, it's funny. I ran into Mark Davis and just in a hotel gym working out, and he introduced himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> don't even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, growing up in Pittsburgh, you probably, you know, the, the Steeler tradition, Art Rooney and that. Oh, but. yeah. What the, what what is uh, your history with that? I'm always fascinated by a guy like you, like the ultimate type A. What do you mean? Person. I well, want the ultimate type A personality. You know, like you you uh, 
when did this uh, get in your head, like, you know, I'm going to own a, a sports team? I, oh, it, I to... mean, I had no idea, no inkling growing up. I mean, my dad did upholstery on, on cars, right? Right. So if you had a rip in your car, you took it to my dad to, to sew it up. Right. Um, I mean, I told my dad, you know, when I made $100,000 in a year for the first time, and he started crying for a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just that type. You know, I mean, we weren't poor by any stretch, but we were, we were solidly middle class. I hear you, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, so... I never, it never even crossed my mind. Never even imagined it until um, I happened to. Be, I was a season ticket holder for probably six years um, before I finally sold Broadcast.com to Yahoo, mm. and I, I was at opening night with um, my then girlfriend, now my wife, um, the '99 2000 season. I'm like, we're undefeated. It's going to be a great year, and you know, and <laughs> it, it wasn't a sellout. There was no energy in the building, and it was then, and literally not a day before that I thought, you know what, I can do a better job than this. Hmm. And then I meet, reached out to Mark Reguire, who I'd met through a friend, and and then he introduced me to Ross Perot Jr., and the whole thing happened in about a, a month or two. Wow. Wow. Jeez. Now, what, what, how proud are you that night uh, you, you beat you beat the Heat, man? Is that guy? Oh, my God. I mean, that... can imagine. I mean, literally, <laughs> if I even see video of it, I, I start to tear up. You know? what, a, what, a, what a great, great win, because here they are, sort of the evil empire after the, you know, the, the, the brag and the press conference, and the first year out, they're going to start this dynasty, and you guys come out of nowhere, and what a, what a series, and just a testament to what you were able to build oh, there. I mean, and that's really, you know, a testament to Dirk and Jay Kidd and yeah. Jason Terry and, you know, Sean Marion and the whole crew, and, and, you know, it was amazing, and you talk about them being in the evil empire. I remember... After we won, I went to New York a couple of weeks later for something, and I walked into, you know, one of the restaurants. I forget. It was like one of the hot, trendy restaurants we were going to. And literally, most of the restaurants stood up and gave me a standing <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. It was fun. It was fun to watch. It really was. Um, hey, Mark, you mentioned uh, Jason Kidd. What kind of job do you think he's going to do as a head, go head coach in Brooklyn? You know, his basketball IQ is off the charts. So in terms of being able to make in-game adjustments and do the right thing, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any question. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of personalities there, um, and it'll be sure. really, really interesting to see how he does. I mean, while I'd like to wish him the best, you know, I've said it before, I hope they go 0-82. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't you that think that's every team. <laughs> don't you think that's the hardest thing in basketball? You can see why sometimes these dream team teams don't win. It's it's harnessing these guys who are superstars. I'll tell you what, Artie, you the know. hardest job for an NB, for an owner of any professional sports team is hiring a coach. Right. You know, people ask, you know, I talk to people here about the Cowboys and everybody wants to slam Jerry Jones and this and that. You know, uh, hiring a coach is is harder than than finding a wife, you know, <laughs> because you know coaches aren't stupid. You right. Know, they come in and you do an interview and they know your personnel. They know it as well as as you do. They've been watching, and they know how to talk to talk. They know you know they know how to sell their lingo, and they understand what it takes at some level. And so it, it's really hard to to try to figure out what the right fit um, is, and and it literally the hardest thing I've ever done. And, and I've been lucky. I've, I've only had three coaches in my entire 14 years. And, right. and that, that's a lot to me, but it's nothing compared to some teams. And, and you look at teams and you go, wow, they've got a big three or they got all this talent. How can they not do it? And then, you know, you look and see they've been through, like the Nets, how many, how many coaches have they been through in the last couple of years? No, absolutely. No, that, it, it seems see, they got to get stable. You're right. And, uh, and I don't hard. know. It, it it seems it seems so easy. It's a game, but it, it's 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 no, not. Because, you know, coaching is not just about the X's and O's. It's getting guys to believe and buy in and respect it's you. Yeah, yeah, respect. But it's also the culture of the organization because there's no season that's perfect. You know, the the year we won, literally, we went on a road trip and lost like six games in a row by like 25 points on average, and and that was towards the end of the season, and and we were down and. You know, then we'd go play Portland in, Portland in the playoffs in game four out there. We had a 19-point lead going into the fourth quarter and blew it. Yeah. You know, and it's really, you know, what what's in your locker room, not just with the coach, but with the culture, with the organization, with, you know, the chemistry of players, and do they care enough about winning as opposed to themselves? And, you know, that's always the challenge. Can you put all those pieces together? And, you know, it's one of the reasons people say, well, why don't you trade Dirk, get some pieces? I'm like, Dirk defines our culture. When, when your best player, no matter how old, is the first one in the gym and last to leave and works the hardest and, and encourages guys the way Dirk does, 
that has a value that goes far beyond what happens on the court. Yeah, it's, it's, how, many, uh, how many times, Mark, do you think Delonte West had sex with LeBron James? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he swore to be up and down. It never happened. <laughs> oh, good. You know, good. That's good. Hey, what kind of a guy is Delonte? He's a I guy I root Delonte. for. I root I, for the guy. <laughs> I love Delonte, but Delonte just... You know, when when Delonte has his extremes, he has his real extremes. Right, right. I hear you. <laughs> and so, you know, it, I, I re we tried really, really hard with D West, and I, I keep in touch with him. We talk and text back and forth, and, and I really hope he gets picked up because he can play. He's a great player. I think, I think he's he's learned his lesson, but you know, it's tough as a team to take that risk. Uh, Axis TV has that been a fun venture for yeah, you? Having it, a good. You know, we we just rebranded a year ago, and. You know, really came down to two things. One, things aren't, you know, live TV is what it's all about. With, with social media. It's great. When you're on Twitter, when things are live, like, you know, you did a great job with Gotham Comedy. It was just, so much fun doing that live. It really yeah, was exciting and, you know. It's yeah. real, right? you got to let it yeah. go and it, you just go with whatever happens. And, yeah. you know, people online are talking about it. And so, you know, that plus the fact that not only there's no live stand-up anymore, we wanted to do that, but there's no music anymore. There's yeah. no music on TV anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people with big screen TVs, great sound systems, you know, yada, yada, we wanted some place that they can go and get live concerts, interact, you know, experience, interact with each other online. And when we're not live, then, you know, we'll have great music and great shows to put on. You know, we've got Ski TV where they're interviewing, you know, Chris Brown next week. Two chains probably right now as we're speaking and then doing live performances. Gotham Comedy on Wednesday night. You know, we've, you know, all day Sundays concerts. We've got a lot of original programming. And just going live is so much better on television just because why – while you're watching TV, you can be tweeting and Facebooking and emailing and texting and being part of the show. Yeah, well, me doing that show turned a lot of my friends onto the whole channel, and they absolutely love it. Oh, yeah, and we're going to do a whole lot more of that, and we're open to ideas, too. The cool part about owning a network is, Artie, you got an idea? Yeah. Let's do it. Well, you may hear from me, absolutely. I, uh, w what about... Um... And by the way, I know you're on DirecTV Live. I watch you, so it's Channel 340. Access TV is Channel 340 on DirecTV. On DirecTV 340, absolutely. Uh, Shark Tank, what about that? That show was killing it. Yeah, a lot. I really, you really do a good job with it, man. Well, I appreciate that. It's interesting. Yeah. It, you know, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say when I went on there as a guest shark three years ago, I guess now, that I didn't think it'd be three guest episodes and out. <laughs> right. It's a business show. Who the hell's going to watch a business <laughs> yeah. show? But it just keeps on growing and growing. Well, it's about the personalities. I mean, you, a guy like you makes it interesting. And people, listen, that's the great... Other than, you know, sex... The, the greatest American disease is figuring out how do I make money? How do I become Mark Cuban? It's how do the I... proof of the American mm -hmm. dream. Yeah. If you want to be me, that's setting your sights <laughs> off a low. <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know... Um, well, whatever, you know, I, 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 obviously that's not true. I mean, you no. you know, you're, you're a guy who... It's the American dream. His father, you know, the upholstery business, uh, a good man who hey, gave you a good upbringing. The guy in the world, right? I'm just glad it's me. And But, you know, it, that's funny. You know, you talk about that stuff, whether it's on Shark Tank or not. Now I've got three kids and a family... And the money ain't worth crap, right? Right. <laughs> you know, my my daughter throws a hissy fit, and you know, you know, she sprained her finger yesterday, and she hurt her neck today, and every day is a different drama. She doesn't <laughs> know how much money I have, trust me. <laughs> For a little while, because you ventured into that uh, that business on TV, like you were the uh, you were the target of Donald Trump's anger for a while. What is that like? And what, well, that's what? fun. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was. It was an interesting little while. Oh, you, okay, so we all have that friend that you know you like. But he's so easy to pick on, right? <laughs> and then when you pick on him, he tries to bow up and you know, oh yeah, try, yeah, and try to be witty to come back at you, <laughs> and and you just roll your eyes every time he opens his mouth. Right? And that's Donald Trump to me. <laughs> you know, I like him. I actually do. And he's a you know good guy or not, he's, he's interesting. But he's just that guy that's in your group. You know, and I'm not saying I hang out with him, but right. social, you know, social media wise, that whenever he tries to pick on me, I just you know. I just tweet him back, like, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right, though. That, that is a good compliment for him. But wherever he is, something is going on. He's, he's yeah, good no, at making no stuff doubt. happen. And, yeah, yeah. Look, you can argue, you know, how much money or this or that, but he, he's, he's made his brand. He's made money. He enjoys it. And that's where I give him credit. He, he enjoys himself, and, 
you know, but when it comes to social media, <laughs> I know that is, a, <laughs> you know? that is a different thing. I mean, it, that is, uh, it might be, you know, it's, that's, I just got into it a couple of years ago myself and I should have gotten into it earlier. I know comics really figured out how to, how to, uh, you know, well, yeah, use them. Particularly with comics, right? Because it's like yeah. picking on a heckler, only you have time to think about what you want to say. Right? Sure. Yeah. You know, and they can come back to you all you want, but you never try to out heckle a comedian. Well, it's you built never for. Never try to out comic a comedian because you're going to get crushed. Right. Well, it's mm -hmm. built for comedians. You're right because you get to be witty. You get to plug stuff here and there, and I'm having a good time. But you're right. If you don't know how to use it properly, it can be pretty, pretty awful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you take everything personally, because people have Twitter courage to no end. Right. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. That's you know, the other thing. You got to be able to laugh at the negative stuff because it's usually based in nothing. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, and there, there's a reason. It's funny because, you know, people talk about how there's, they have one, like I have 1.8 million followers. I guarantee you 1.799 million of them are like semi fake accounts where somebody <laughs> set up an account just so they could yell at me and call me names. Right? <laughs> I know, people are, really, people are getting get, get off on that. It's really, that, that's, that's the sad part about it, but interesting, nonetheless. Uh, yeah, the, a guy like you uh, with your money, I always want to ask somebody like, like that, like, do you ever get tempted just to like, you know, get a bunch of other rich guys together, f fly in a private jet to some uh, island where the, the, the laws are very loose and like, like buy two midgets and let them fight it to the death? Why do I like, need anybody else's help for that? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, why, do you, why do you think I haven't done that? <laughs> and, and like buy two them. human beings and let them fight to the death. Wait, you got to listen. Two is not a party. <laughs> 17 and now you're talking. <laughs> See, that's exactly right. 17 uh, is a bit, That would be a party. Yeah. You could redo The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, listen, Mark. Um, I, had, I had a whole play to get... Uh, um, <laughs> with a whole play. To, oh, we... Oh, we. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's fun. That's enjoying your money. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. Mark, it seems you are always on the cutting edge of everything that's going on. What do you have a, a next endeavor that you can? Well, yeah, the kind of stuff I'm paying attention to now. I mean, particularly, it goes back to what we're talking about with with performance enhancing drugs. It, it's all this is going to be a tempest in the teapot probably in ten years because mm. of personalized medicine. You know, right, right. What, what's changed is that as computers have gotten faster and faster, they can decode your, your, the human gene, the, you know, your DNA, down to proteins, down into molecules, things that, you know, are beyond my understanding. But what it really boils down to is that all of our bodies really break down to be a math equation. And we all have little variances and mutations that make us unique. And by being able to break down those genes um, and... You're, we're going to be able to, rather than, look, I'll, I'll say it another way. For, for my kids and their kids, my four-year-old, the concept that daddy bought an aspirin and there was, a, not, let's just say, an Advil, and there was a warning at the bottom of the, the, the thing saying, you might be that one unlucky schmuck that dies from this, <laughs> mm -hmm. will seem barbaric because in the future, all the medicine that we take and consume will be customized and personalized just for us that's unbelievable mm. that's yeah. that's mind-boggling that yeah, is my that's really where things are going quickly, wow wow quickly. and so you're already seeing it now where specialized proteins to cure mutations and that create leukemias and and stuff like that so we're just at the cusp and you know we're, we're arguing about health care we're arguing about um, performance enhancing drugs in 10 years a lot of this will just be you know, seem barbaric and ludicrous and ancient history. So, in other words, a doctor will examine you with state-of-the-art equipment and, and based on what he finds, a personalized medication for you. You'll take a sample, like already with the Mavericks, like something I do personally, even not talking, like every three months I go and get my blood taken and get it tested. Right. Um, for all, you know, like if you get sick, they test your blood. Sure. And they come back with all the difference. You, this level, this level, your PSA is this, your yeah. PSA, right? Well, I get that done every three months because when they compare, when, when Artie goes in because he's not feeling well and they do a blood sample, they compare it to the general population, which is pretty much worthless. Right. They say, oh, your PSA is supposed to be between this and this, but you don't know what your ranges have been over time. So I go in every three months, so I have a baseline for all my ranges for all my tests, and those tests get more and more advanced every time I take them. So if something goes wrong, God forbid, I have a foundation of information. We're starting to do that same thing with the players. Mm. Send them in for, you know, so in the future, they'll take a blood sample, they'll take, you know, have them spit in a, in, a, in a test tube, and then we'll process all that. And hopefully in the not-too-distant future, we'll be able to do that 
during the game. Wow. So I'll be able to, you know, instead of just drinking Gatorades to get, you know, electrolytes, I'll be like, spit in this tube, it processes it. Okay, here's a mix for you, and here's your protein shake or whatever's in it. That is unbelievable. That and really so, is. One yeah, of those... and that's the kind of stuff I'm, you know, we call it bioanalytics, and that's the type of stuff, you know, we have with the, we're working on with the. And you're or, investing, you're investing in that personally. As we Do, speak, yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's yeah. great. So it's kind of crazy and you know and futuristic, but you know you you got to keep on pushing to to make things change. Well, and keep. Again, that's yeah. why I'm interested in all this PED stuff. Keep it up, wow. man. The world the world needs people like you. It always will, Mark. Keep yeah, it up, brother. That, but uh, fun, right? Yeah, and if you're ever in town, come and uh, come in and join us. We'd love to talk to you more anytime. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for for the patience, Artie. Thanks for having me on, guys. And. Check out Access TV on Channel 340 and buy lots of math season tickets. <laughs> we, we will. We'll do. All Thanks right, God. Mark. Be well, man. Appreciate it. You too. The great Mark Cuban and uh, interesting stuff. And uh, we'll be back right after these words.